Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures. Um, we're still looking at spectrophotometers and will be for the rest of the semester. Um, we understood from the last mini lecture a little bit about this sample. In other words, how materials, really real physical materials, have energy levels and how photons happen to have enough energy, being in the electron volt range, uh, to raise electrons from the populated lower states to the empty upper states, giving up their energy in the process and being absorbed, or vice versa, when energy falls from a higher state down to a lower state, a photon is emitted at fluorescence. And these um, energy levels of particular materials serve, if you will, as, as optics and photonics fingerprints that allow us to identify things. And so let's keep looking at this idea of sample here with photons coming in and photons coming out and the ideas of absorption and fluorescence a little bit um, in a little bit more detail today and see if we can get a little bit more quantitative about these things. So absorption, remember, is when a photon comes in, is destroyed in the process, and an electron goes from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. And we've shown two of the energy levels here, and you can go and look at uh, the last mini lecture if you need a review of these concepts. Um, so what we're interested in is that we're going to say we have some length dx of material. And there is sort of some kind of dye molecules or some kind of absorbing molecules that when a photon hits them will raise their electrons from a lower level up to an upper level. And let's say there's some concentration C, and of course this is going to be in terms of molecules per cubic centimeter, so those are going to be the units on C, and that every molecule of absorber has some proportionality K uh, that's just the chance of a photon being absorbed if it comes close to us. And if K is small, then the photons are going to go through and have a small chance of being absorbed. If K is large, then the photons have a high probability. We're also going to define a term in, which is the number of photons going through this length right here, dx of this material. And the probability of photons being absorbed is essentially going to, we're going to call alpha. And alpha is equal to C times K. And alpha is big if there's a high concentration or a high probability that photons get, get absorbed when they come close to a material. And alpha is small for lower concentrations and low Ks. And if we calculate the, the number of photons in, so this is the input side of dx right here. And this is the output side of dx. If we calculate the number of photons in and the number of photons out, we see the number of photons is just the number that came in, in minus the amount that have been lost. And we're assuming the probability of a photon being lost is this proportionality constant we're calling alpha, the number of photons, because if a lot of photons come in, we're going to lose a lot more, and dx, the length of the material. And in the usual calculus way of things, we can write the change in the number of photons, delta n. And let me go ahead and erase this, because I hate writing in red ink. It's sort of hard on the eyes, so let's go ahead and choose a black color. Um, the change in the number of photons delta n is just n, the number n minus the number out, or excuse me, let's do this backwards, the number out uh, minus the number n, dx minus n, which is just equal to alpha n dx. Also in the usual calculus way of things, we're going to assume that delta x approaches zero, and in this case, delta n becomes dn. And so we change our equation to say dn is equal to minus alpha n dx. And we can divide both sides of this equation by dx. And then we can actually go ahead and solve this differential equation to find n is equal within some constant e to the minus alpha x. This is important because it says how the number of photons changes as they go through a material that has loss proportional to alpha, where alpha, of course, is simply the concentration times some number of molecules. Um, and what we're assuming when we do this is we assume the probability of being absorbed is proportional to the distance of the number of photons present. Um, so let's go ahead and see how to use this maybe in a couple of cases. So let's assume we have some slab of material. 
that has some proportionality constant alpha. And we have light coming in with an intensity of I in and light coming out with an intensity of I out. And we want to know how I out depends on I in and alpha. Well, that's pretty straightforward because I out is simply e to the minus alpha. And we need to define the distance it travels, z, or the thickness of the slab, e to the minus alpha z, I in. And we can calculate um, the amount of power coming out of this. What's a little bit more interesting is if we uh, change this problem so that we have, say, a cell of liquid. And let's go ahead and put some intensity coming in, I in, intensity coming out, I out. And let's go ahead and fill this with some kind of horrible, nasty green liquid there. And we'll say inside this liquid, alpha is a function of wavelength. And remember, it's also proportional to the concentration of the liquid. Um, so now, if we take the ratio of I out divided by I in, we know this is E to the minus alpha, which is a function of wavelength, um, times the distance. Again, let's call it Z. And you'll note that with a simple taking the log of both sides, so the natural log of I out divided by I in, and this will give us minus alpha of lambda Z, and all we have to do is divide by Z to get alpha. And the interesting thing about this is it's very easy to put in light of many wavelengths for I in, in other words, uh, white light, measure the light coming out, and find out how alpha varies with wavelength. And you will remember that we saw in the last mini lecture that alpha is in fact a fingerprint for many different types of materials. So this type of measurement very easily not only lets you fingerprint materials by measuring um, alpha of lambda, but because the alpha is proportional to the concentration, we can also get out the concentration of liquids um, by doing measurements like this if we know what alpha is. Uh, fluorescence is the same thing. Remember that fluorescence is just your electron dropping down from an upper level to a lower energy level, and in this case, a photon's emitted. Um, usually, we get fluorescence by exciting a liquid with light, causing the electrons to go to the energy level and then seeing what drops out. And if we do this in the limit of, of a small concentration, and here we're using N for concentration, uh, then we can expand our exponential in terms of a power series. And since the amount of light absorbed is proportional to the number of the concentration of molecules, but also the fluorescence is proportional to the concentration of molecules. For small concentrations, the fluorescence scales is n squared. So fluorescence turns out to be a very powerful tool for, for measuring small quantities of materials. And in fact, is the favorite technique in a lot of biochemical techniques and techniques for measuring extremely small quantities of, of particular species that happen to fluoresce. And this is the technique we'll be using in our spectrophotometer. Uh, remember that the energy out in terms of fluorescence uh, does depend on how far the electron falls from the upper level to the lower level. And we'll get something that looks like this, where uh, you will get a broadband for broadband transitions. And we talked about this a little bit when we did uh, talked about where energy levels came from. Um, at longer wavelengths in the green, you can get transitions from here, and then you get transitions out to the red. And you'll notice that what happens is for fluorescence, you get no light, and then you tend to get a peak of light uh, where the fluorescence occurs, as we've already talked about. And also, as we talked about before, the absorption, which is shown as the bottom going transitions with the dashed lines here, are in fact blue shifted with respect to the fluorescence. So there is a relationship between absorption and fluorescence, which you can also use to identify species. And we'll learn more about how the energy levels arise and look into a little bit more detail of quantum mechanics about photon dynamic processes in the next mini lecture.